Being fluent in English is not about knowing all the words. Being fluent in English is not about never forgetting words during a conversation. Being fluent, in my view, is about being able to successfully and clearly convey your messages, ideas, thoughts, opinions, and even emotions. But in order for you to be able to do that, you need to master a really important skill. This skill is called paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is about communicating the same idea using different words. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you a little bit about paraphrasing and how you can implement this into your weekly study routine. This is going to change your life as an English learner and speaker, and stay tuned because today's episode is going to be really nice. Hey guys, how's it going? Thiago here, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. Before we get started here, let me remind you that only this month, there is a Black Friday deal going on, and I'm selling my pronunciation course at an incredibly low price. This is the lowest I will ever sell this course, guys. So if I were you, I would really take advantage now because you have until this Sunday, to be specific, December 1st, to secure this deal, okay? I'm being nice here, and I'm adding one extra day past November, so I'm going to close the card on this deal on Sunday, December 1st, to be more exact, at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, December 1st. So this is a pronunciation course that's going to teach you the main sounds of the English language and also the main connected speech patterns that native speakers use in media, in movies, in series. Knowing all that will help you first better understand native speakers, especially when they speak fast in media, but also it's going to help you speak with more clarity more flow and more fluency. You're gonna really take your pronunciation to the next level. The great thing about the course is that it doesn't expire either. With one single payment, you own the material and the future updates for life. I'm constantly updating the course with new lessons, new videos, and with one single payment, you have access to all that. Currently, this year, I've been selling the course at $67 US for international students and 347 Brazilian reais for my Brazilian audience. Only this month of November, Black Friday month, the price is dropped. So from $67, you're gonna pay only $47 US if you are an international student. And for those of you Brazilians, you're gonna pay 267 Brazilian reais. Again, this is the cheapest I will ever sell this course, guys, and you have it for life. So if I were you, I would secure this deal now because Next year, I will raise the price to $97 and 497 Brazilian Hei. So this is our chance now to take your pronunciation to the next level still this year by enrolling in this pronunciation course. Link in the description of the video, also in the pinned comment below. And if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, just go to the show notes of this episode and you can find the link there, okay? So like I said at the beginning, Fluent English speakers forget words from time to time, and they don't know all the words of the English language. It's not like we are walking dictionaries, you know? But fluent English speakers are able to navigate conversations. Let me say that again. Fluent English speakers are able to navigate conversations. Instead of freezing up, they go around it and find other ways to explain their ideas if they forget something, for example. This is where paraphrasing comes in handy. When you paraphrase, you are able to communicate the same idea in different ways. And the better you become at paraphrasing, the easier it is for you to come up with alternative ways to convey an idea. So now what I'm going to do with you guys is I'm going to give you here a few example sentences. I'm going to give you the sentence first, and then I'm going to give you an alternative sentence communicating the same idea so you can see how you can communicate the same idea using different structures and different words. This is a real powerful skill. I really recommend if you have time as you are watching this for you to pick a piece of paper, a notebook, or something for you to take notes of because... We're going to be going over some nice language details today, and um, it's going to be really beneficial if you can take notes at the same time, okay? So let's start here with 
a couple of B2 level sentences. B2, as you know, is an upper intermediate level. It's a level where you are already quite independent as an English user. Look at this example. Deb was in favor of visiting the museum. Deb was in favor of visiting the museum. How could you say this differently? How could you communicate this idea using different words? Here's a suggestion. Deb thought it would be a good idea to visit the museum. Deb thought it would be a good idea to visit the museum. So in the first version, I have Deb was in favor of. Was in favor of. In the paraphrased version, I'm saying that she thought it would be a good idea. Okay? Also, in terms of grammar here, notice that I say in favor of visiting the museum because of is a preposition. Whenever you have a preposition and right after you have a verb, that verb needs to be in the ing form. This is a rule. It's a grammar rule, okay? Uh, verbs that come after prepositions are placed in the ing. So that's why I say she was in favor of visiting and not she was in favor of visit. Okay? On the other hand, I can say that it would be a good idea to visit the museum. All right? Here's another sentence. Do you know when the match starts, Sally? Asked Mary. Here's a paraphrased version. Mary asked Sally if she knew what time the match started. Mary asked Sally if she knew what time the match started. So here we have a classic case of direct speech versus reported speech. In the first version, do you know when the match starts, Sally? This is direct speech. These are the exact words Mary used. That's why also they are in quotation marks. But when you report that, you are employing reported speech or indirect speech. Mary asked Sally if she knew what time the match started. This illustrates the importance of knowing a little bit about grammar, guys, because, for example, as you can see here, the first question is in the present tense, right? Do you know when the match starts? When I report that, I need to change that present tense question to a past tense sentence. That's why I say, Mary asked Sally if she knew what time the match started. So present tense becomes past tense in reported speech. You see how important it is for you to study a little bit of grammar? Don't neglect grammar, guys. Grammar can be your secret weapon in developing proficiency and fluency in the language. Moving on here, take a look at this sentence. I'd prefer not to cancel the meeting. I'd prefer not to cancel the meeting. How could we communicate that idea using different words? Here's a suggestion. I'd rather not call off the meeting. I'd rather not call off the meeting. So instead of saying, I'd prefer not, I can say, I'd rather not. This construction, I'd rather do something or I'd rather not do something, is also used to express preference. So you can say, I prefer to do something or I'd rather do something. I prefer not to do something or I'd rather not do something. You see the importance of grammar again? And also vocabulary. Instead of using the word cancel, I could use the phrasal verb, call off. When you call off a meeting or when you call off an event, you cancel it. You see, so this also illustrates the importance of increasing your vocabulary range. Knowing different words, that are synonyms that can communicate the same idea among themselves. So, I prefer not to cancel the meeting becomes I'd rather not call off the meeting. So, these are some examples of B2 level sentences, all right? Now, let's move on to C1 level sentences. The C1 level now, as you all know, is already an advanced level of English. So, not only are you an independent user, but you are already a proficient user of the language. You can use the language in various situations and you can handle both simpler, 
more concrete types of information and also a more complex, abstract type of information, okay? So here's an example sentence at C1 level. Anna got the job even though she didn't have much experience in public relations. Anna got the job even though she didn't have much experience in public relations. This is another uh, key feature, by the way, between C1 and C2 language versus B2 language, for example. The sentences tend to be a little bit longer, all right? You have more clauses to deal with instead of shorter, simpler sentences, okay? So again, Anna got the job even though she didn't have much experience in public relations. How could we paraphrase this? Check it out. Anna got the job in spite of her lack of experience in public relations. Anna got the job in spite of her lack of experience in public relations. This is a C1 type sentence, guys. Can you see the, the structure here that's being used? How the words are being placed? Anna got the job in spite of her lack of experience. So first of all here, instead of using the conjunction even though, I could say in spite of, which has the same idea. Okay? And in the first version, I'm saying that she didn't have much experience. All right? In the second version, in the paraphrase version, I'm saying that uh, there was a lack of experience on her part. You see? So, Anna got the job even though she didn't have much experience in public relations becomes Anna got the job in spite of her lack of experience in public relations. You see, so if you are able to do that, if you are able to come up with these two variations, you are doing very well in your English development. And this is a, a, a skill that every fluent speaker needs to develop. You need to be able to communicate the same idea in various ways. And in order for you to do that, you have to employ all your knowledge of the English language, all your grammar knowledge, all your vocabulary knowledge. You see? Look at the second sentence here at C1 level. I'm disappointed with the sequel when I compare it to the original movie. I'm disappointed with the sequel. Talking about a movie, right? Like there, there is a, maybe a, the first movie and then the sequel, yeah? Part two, let's say. So I'm disappointed with the sequel when I compare it to the original movie. We can also communicate that idea like this. I think the sequel is disappointing in comparison to the original movie. I think the sequel is disappointing in comparison to the original movie. So in the first version, I'm saying I'm disappointed. You see, me, the person, I'm disappointed with the sequel. In the second sentence, I'm saying that the sequel is disappointing, right? So both words here are adjectives. Disappointed is an adjective. Disappointing is also an adjective. Okay, we usually use the ed ending adjectives when talking about people and how they feel at a certain moment. So if I say I'm disappointed, it's about this time right now that I'm talking to you about, right? Uh, right now, I feel disappointed with the sequel. I am disappointed. Now, adjectives that end in ing are used to talk about things. So if I'm going to talk about the sequel or the movie, then I say the sequel is disappointing. I can't say the sequel is disappointed. It doesn't work. Okay? So this is the difference between, for example, uh, I'm bored. You see, it's how I'm feeling right now, me, a person, versus the movie is boring. You see, I'm talking about something, the movie. I, I will never say the movie is bored. Okay? The movie is boring. Now, we're still on that topic of uh, ED and ING adjectives. You can also use ING adjectives to talk about people, okay? But then if you do that, you are talking about the person's personality, okay? So I can say he's bored. If I say he's bored, that's how he's feeling right now. It's a temporary situation. He's just feeling bored right now because of 
something. Something is making him feel bored. But if I say that he's boring, you see? Now I'm talking about him as a person. He is boring. Like, it's his personality. He's always been like that. And he is the one that makes other people feel bored. Okay? So, you see, again, the importance of studying a little bit of grammar. In this case, the topic is adjectives that end in ed versus adjectives that end in ing. So let's continue here. I think the sequel is disappointing in comparison to the original movie. So the first version uses the verb when I compare it to the original movie. In the second version, I can change the verb compare to the noun form. The noun form is in comparison to. And it communicates the same idea. When I compare it to the original movie, in comparison to the original movie, you are communicating the same idea, but you are using different words and structuring the sentence differently. Another topic that you have to master is word formation, right? Word formation is about that. Picking a verb, changing it to a noun. Picking a noun, changing it to an adjective, and then an adverb, and on and on like that. Working with prefixes and suffixes. All right? Finally, for C1 level, we have this one. My brother now earns far less than he did when he was younger. My brother now earns far less than he did when he was younger. A paraphrased version here could be, my brother doesn't earn nearly as much now as he did when he was younger. My brother doesn't earn nearly as much now as he did when he was younger. So in the first version, I say, my brother now earns far less. I'm using an affirmative sentence, right? My brother now earns far less. In the second version, I'm using a negative sentence. My brother doesn't earn nearly as much. But you see how interesting, the idea is the same. Even though I am using a negative structure, I'm still communicating the same idea. Isn't that fascinating? My brother now earns far less, and my brother doesn't earn nearly as much now. That's the same idea as he did when he was younger. Got it? So these are some examples of C1 type of sentences. Hey guys, so as you can see, the video looks a little bit different now because unfortunately, the first time I filmed this episode, there were a few glitches in this portion now. So I'm actually reshooting this portion, this last part of the topic, so that we can actually finish the episode. I apologize for that, but uh, sometimes technical difficulties happen and then we have to work around it. It's the same principle of paraphrasing, right? So when we're having a conversation with someone, sometimes you're gonna hit an obstacle, a roadblock, like, oh my God, I forgot the word, I forgot the expression, no problem. Work around it, it's just what I'm doing right now. I'm working around <laughs> the technical difficulty I had with uh, the video the first time I filmed it, okay? But basically what I wanna do in this last part of the topic here is just give you some tips on how you can improve your paraphrasing skills. Now that you understand what paraphrasing is, and we have covered some examples, how can you start practicing paraphrasing more often? First of all, you can make a list of random sentences. Then try to paraphrase one by one. As you paraphrase one by one, you can try to use different words and structures, and always trying to communicate the same idea as accurately as possible, okay? So keep that in mind as well. It's not just about paraphrasing the original sentence, but also being as close as possible to the meaning of the original sentence. Then you are really practicing this correctly, all right? You can also make a list of random words that you already know, and then you can come up with at least one synonym for each word. For that, you can use websites like Thesaurus, for example, thesaurus.com. It's a free online dictionary for synonyms. You go there, you search for a word, and Thesaurus will give you all possible synonyms and even antonyms of that word you searched for, okay? And obviously, 
You can also use AI for this. You can use ChatGPT or Gemini. You can ask uh, the model to give you the synonym, at least one or two synonyms for each word on your list. And you can also ask for example sentences with those words, okay? I would also say it's important that you focus on improving your vocabulary and grammatical range. So it's not just about improving your vocabulary, but also improving your grammar. Because many times when you paraphrase something, it's not just the words that you change. You, have, you also have to change the structure of the original sentence, the grammar, the tense that is being used there. So the more solid your grammar knowledge is, the easier it is for you to uh, paraphrase successfully and accurately, okay? Finally, I would say, as a final recommendation here, prep for a Cambridge exam. Prep for a Cambridge exam. It could be B2 first, C1 advanced, or even C2 proficiency. Um, because the Cambridge exams have a part on the test that is specifically about this, that tests you specifically on your ability to paraphrase things. So you don't have to necessarily take the exam, but simply by prepping for it, that's gonna give you um, a lot of opportunity already to practice paraphrasing some more, okay? Now, uh, just some final words here about this topic. Remember, paraphrasing is about communicating the same idea in different ways. It's a skill that everybody who aspires to become a fluent English speaker needs to master. What makes a person truly fluent is not the number of words that person knows, but how well this person can navigate conversations with people in various situations. All right? So now it's time for the Learner's Corner. And for the Learner's Corner this week, I have here a very nice audio message that Margaret sent to the show. Margaret is from Poland, so let's listen to what she has to say. Hi, Tiago. I'm Margaret, and I'm 36 years old now. I discovered your channel relativ relatively um, recently, but I'm very impressed. And my journey with English language has been going on for some time now, but... Lately, I've been focusing on studying completely. Uh, I come from Poland and Polish is my native language, but I've been, I've been living in Germany for 12 years now and German is my second language. I studied English at school for a good 10 years, but it didn't teach me much. Um, thanks to your channel, I discovered a new learning technique and it's fantastic. Uh, but the problem is that I still have German in my head and I feel like there is no room for a new language. Uh, additionally, I am also learning some French, which has many similar tastes uh, to English. And But I don't give up and I learn new things every day. And I'm proud of it. I watch, every, I watch you every day, even several times a day, because I feel similarities between us. I also love music like you. I play you can piano, and I like learning English just like you. Thank you again for your channel and the work you put it. Keep it up. Bye-bye. <laughs> very nice, Margaret. Thank you so much for the wonderful message. Uh, you speak very well. You speak very well. Um, I know you said that you feel like there is no more room in your brain anymore for other languages, but wow, I mean, uh, you speak, I imagine, Polish, right? Your native language, but you also speak German, and your English is really good, and now you're studying French. You are a polyglot. That's amazing, you know? Um, thank you so much for following the, the channel here, following the episodes. I really appreciate that. Um, it's learners like you who make this channel strong, you know, and make this community a high quality community here on the platform. And I'm proud of this community that we are building together, guys. And uh, thank you so much, Margaret, for the support. All right. Um, about maybe um, feeling more comfortable with English, it's just a matter of time. You know, the more content you have with the language, the more, let's say, ingrained in you the language becomes. But I, I would already say that you communicate extremely well in English, you know, very fluently. And your pronunciation is also very clear. 
All right. Thanks again for the message. I really appreciate that. And guys, if you want to do it just like Margaret and send a message here to be featured on the show, you can do so by going to speakpipe.com slash English with Tiago. You can send me a message of about 90 seconds, all right, in audio. Or if you prefer, you can also write to me via email. You can send me an email at hello.teachertiago at gmail.com. Send me an email with a question, with a testimonial that you have, with some feedback that you have, a story you want to share. So uh, I reserve this moment of the episode, of every episode, to highlight you guys, to feature you guys, the learners, because, you know, this show is yours, all right? Before I let you go, don't forget to take advantage of my Black Friday deal. Again, you have until the end of this week, until December 1st, to secure this awesome discount that I'm offering uh, on my pronunciation course. The price will increase uh, right after, you know, and next year it will increase even more. So if you want to take your pronunciation to the next level, guys, now is the time uh, to do so at a very low price. So really, you know, I can't help you any more than this. Now the ball is in your court, buy the course, and uh, you're going to own the material for life, okay? A free way for you to support my work here on YouTube and on the podcast is by subscribing to the channel on YouTube, liking the video. This is really important, guys. Write me a comment also here under the video, letting me know what you thought about today's topic, about paraphrasing or sharing something else that is on your mind. The more you interact with the videos here, the better for YouTube to understand that, hey, this is a good video. Let's propagate it to more people. And... If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave me a five-star review, follow the show. You can also leave a comment on Spotify if you want to, you know, letting me know about this episode. And that's pretty much it, guys. So again, don't forget to take advantage of my Black Friday deal for the pronunciation course. All the links are here in the description of the video, in the pinned comment, and in the show notes. And I am signing off. I'm Thiago. Thank you so much. I'll be talking to you very soon in the upcoming episode. Bye-bye.